Hey guys, here I have the Nexus 4, which was released by LG and Google over a year ago. This phone is still a solid performer and has been compared to every flagship phone released since. Over the past few days, Nexus 4 owners have started receiving Android 4.4 KitKat update over the air. So here I am reviewing KitKat on a Nexus 4. Now, there has been a lot of speculation that some KitKat features would be exclusive on Nexus 5. So in this video, I'd also like to talk about how different is the KitKat in N4 from that of the N5. Also, some people were kind of expecting that KitKat would enable the LTE radio on the Nexus 4, but that is not happening. Only two network modes, 2G and 3G are available. When you switch on your phone, you'll see the familiar lock screen. But then you can see some minor visual changes like the visual cues for Google Now. It actually shows an arrow showing that you can swipe up to get to Google Now and the camera icon. But it shows that you can swipe left to get to the camera. The lock screen widgets are disabled by default, but you can enable them in settings. So let's go ahead and unlock the device. And hey, you have the good old launcher, which looks exactly the same as that of the Jelly Bean launcher. So yeah, it doesn't come pre-installed with the Google launcher. But we can install Google Launcher into this phone and it works quite well. We'll come to that. Let's go to settings and here as you can see it's Android version 4.4 and the build number is ART16S that is the latest factory image available from Google. Let me go ahead and enable touches. Let's go ahead and enable lock screen widgets. You can enable lock screen widgets right from security enable widgets. When you come back you will see that you can add lock screen widgets again. So let's go ahead and add one of my favorite widgets that is the dash clock. It will give you a lot of information right from your lock screen. So I have got used to using dash clock from my home screen. So I don't want any other widget other than the camera widget. So I will go ahead and disable the lock screen widgets. Now coming back to home, you will see that the notification icons are all white now, the clock color, the battery and that's more neutral color for a phone which has transparent status bar like the Nexus 5. But as you can see here, both in the lock screen and the home screen, Nexus 4 does not have a transparent status bar or the navigation bar. Uh, of course we can get that, that's pretty straightforward, we'll get to that. But traces of blue haven't gone away completely, like in, in settings, when you switch on Wi-Fi, that switch is still blue when it's on and similarly many checkboxes option buttons all those stuff the white has not completely taken over these few visual changes are nice a lot of people were wondering whether the default sms app will be there in kitkat when it comes to other nexus devices and yes the good old messaging app is still there but you can use hangouts as your default messaging app so this app is not really request you can see i have all my messages in my hangouts application now I have to confirm mobile number with one time sms Coming to the camera, the new HDR plus mode, yeah, it is there only for the Nexus 5. In my humble opinion, the camera does seem a little slower to start than it's Jelly Bean. That must be causing many of the negative reviews about the camera which we saw in Nexus 5. And hopefully Google will update the camera software and make it better soon. And there's nothing new in the camera app here. For the photosphere stitching is better. As in the options which we have, there is nothing more. It's just the same old camera. But then... We have got more editing options with KitKat in the uh, stock gallery app. We have much more options, more frames. We have more control over the stuff which we can do to our photos like we see here. And apart from that, the stock gallery seems a bit redundant with the new Photos app which basically integrates the Google Plus Photos to your phone. The Photos app, so it shows basically everything. You can see the folders here, all the folders which are present are shown. I don't know, this also has some editing features but which is not the same as that of the stock gallery. So, I don't know, maybe things will get so sorted out soon. So, I'm sure you guys know all about the new KitKat features. I'll just go through them quickly. The new dialer is there which will show uh, your most frequently contacted people and uh, smart caller ID which is supposedly we going to have Google Plus integration so that you can see identity of unknown numbers which is taken from Google Plus. Apart from that there is a new location setting available which is also available from the quick setting tile. You can easily choose between three modes high accuracy, battery saving and device only it feels much better than the previous location options available. It, it also shows the recent location request 
request and location services which are on there is a new immersive mode in which apps can request to hide the notification bar and the navigation bar but the best thing that i like about that is that you can swipe from the top or bottom to get back the status bar and the navigation bar this is one thing which i loved about many customer rooms and which is there on android by default now that's really great let's go ahead and check out the immersion mode so this is a new easter egg here this easter egg is specifically designed to demonstrate the immersion mode so you can see this easter egg takes up the complete screen space there you cannot see the navigation bar or the status is but let's go ahead and swipe from the top okay it shows the navigation bar first always no matter where you swipe and then you see the status bar you can see the status bar here you can see the navigation bar so this is kind of cool i really want this piece for a long time and i'm loving this i use this all the time especially while playing full screen games you have the new printing settings where there is a global print service available i find it useful especially for printing our pages into pdf like let me go to a web page and there is an option to save as pdf save as pdf you can save and then it's print job and voila you can save it there there is also this full screen album art available which looks gorgeous and which i feel should have been there from much before <laughs> Then there are so many other small small things in KitKat which really makes your life easier like screen recording which I'm actually doing right now which you can do with a simple command ADB shell screen record of course you will have to have ADB set up I'll leave links below uh, on how to do that if you set an alarm it will actually start showing a notification sometime before the alarm so that if we wake up or we have done whatever we have so that we don't need the alarm anymore we can dismiss it early even before the alarm rings that is cool feature let me show that so uh, here you can see upcoming alarm I think it starts showing some one hour before the the alarm so we can dismiss it anytime and i dismissed it so it won't ring at eight o'clock so if you wake up before the alarm time in the morning you can just dismiss it then and there you don't have to go into alarms to disable it this is, this is a small thing but it helps out in many situations and uh you must have seen the new time picker in the alarm clock that is also a welcome addition the new app picker is also quite good it's a small change but i like such small changes that is what improves android with each and every version for example i'm opening a video file so it already highlights mx player even before i clicked it because i used mx player last time so if i use video player this time the next time i open another video the video player will be there by default so i can just press just once or always depending on what i want so it saves one click but this one click is saved so many times so that it becomes really significant that is another thing then the recent app seems to be really seems to come up a bit faster and switching between apps is really good status bar network indicator does not have the up and down arrows anymore they used to show the network activity but due to performance considerations they have been moved into the quick settings here in the quick settings you can see the up and down arrows let me load some page and so while loading the page you will be able to see the up and down arrows and the color of the network strength or the wi-fi strength will turn orange when it cannot come to gcn usually that means there's problem to the internet connection when the color is white it's good to go android 4.4 kitkat has introduced a new runtime which is called r which will probably replace dalvi after a few versions but still in beta and still in deep under the developer options speaking of which we have a few new stuff in the developer options one of them is selecting the runtime switching to r r is somewhat different from dalvik in the sense it pre-compiles the apks instead of the just-in-time compilation used by dalvik and app load times has already improved as shown in some tests in the other videos found in youtube but still many apps are incompatible with r so i still can't switch to r because many of the apps which i use on a daily basis are incompatible another thing in developer options is the process stats you have geek key process stats available where you can see the processor usage memory usage etc etc so new stuff on the developer options always nice to see now getting google launcher is quite easy all you have to do is install one apk if your google search and play services are updated uh, already which will usually happen automatically so basically you just have to install one apk and i have already installed that i'll try to give a link below and then just go to settings settings as a new item which says home if you have multiple launchers installed we can easily select the default launcher from there so this as you can see is the google launcher i press home now and yeah there you have the google launcher it has integrated google now the leftmost pane is google now you must have seen it a lot already and the okay google functionality really works let me try it out okay google how is the weather so if you fell in love with the google now launcher you can always install that as as an added bonus you get transparent status bar and the navigation bar only in the home screen not the lock screen 
see the lock screen status bar is still opaque so the navigation bar let me show you with another wallpaper the new wallpaper picker is there and all these new wallpapers come only with the new Google Launcher. The old launcher which was already there in Jelly Bean has all the old wallpapers which was already there with Jelly Bean. You don't get any of these new wallpapers unless you install the Google Launcher. And yeah, there you have it. There are more things to the KitKat update like new look for the toasts, emojis in the keyboard, a redesigned app for downloads and email etc. But now the question arises, is it time for you to upgrade from the Nexus 4? KitKat has given a refreshing new look to the Nexus 4 and it's looking more polished than ever. This phone is still a seller performer and it will run almost anything which you throw at it. So you will have to upgrade to the Nexus 5 or some other phone only if you want a better camera or a better screen or if you want LTE. This is also my first ever tech review video. So do tell me what you liked and didn't like about this video. Also please do give a thumbs up if you like this video. And follow me on Google Plus to get updates on what's new in Android world. Thank you for watching this video.